Welcome to another nature photography video. Uh, sorry to regular viewers, the last couple of weeks I haven't really posted very much. Um, I've just been taking a bit of a break to be honest, a little bit of a break from YouTube. Um, today it's good to be back out again. Uh, this is actually a bluebell wood. I'm actually going to be doing a workshop here in about four weeks time. It is a beautiful, beautiful bluebell wood. At the moment the bluebells aren't quite out, it's a bit too early for that. Um, but I have a feeling this year is going to be a little earlier on everything. Everything seems to be coming out a little earlier this year. So this time of year is very good uh, for looking for young leaves. You know the young leaves that are just starting to come out, just starting to unfurl. Um, and already I can see some of that. If you can see that okay. Um, so I'm going to go through the equipment I've got with me. Uh, you can see I've got my gear in my big backpack camera bag that I usually take almost everywhere which is the, uh, the f-stop the f-stop satori and then i've got my trusty enduro tripod got my soft shell jacket and then also i've got my uh, waterproof trousers these gore-tex waterproof trousers the only reason being it's very very likely with the type of photography i do that i'll end up getting down on the ground even lying down or if not lying down at least kneeling down so just makes life a little easier keeps you a little bit more comfortable so you see the sky above me is actually very very blank which is just perfect for what I wanted. So overcast conditions is absolutely ideal for woodland photography and flowers and definitely for macro. So uh, definitely don't want bright sun today. If the sun just starts to try and push through a little bit inside the woodland, the quality of the light is still gonna be pretty good. So for this session, I haven't really got any specific pictures in mind. It's just good to be out and just with the camera. And I'm just gonna look around and just see whatever I can find. So it might be some quite wide woodland scenes, or it might be more close-ups, or what I would call semi-close-ups. Um, what I mean by that is still shooting with a macro lens, but not, not necessarily getting in really, really close. Uh, maybe you're photographing like the, the top part of a plant, flower head, or maybe a group of flower heads, for example. So you're still kind of looking at looking at it in a in a fairly close-up sense but not really really macro uh, you can see lots of bluebells around but they're not quite out yet they haven't really come into bloom haven't got that color to them yet it is windier than i'd like it to be uh, i think the wind outside is about 10 miles an hour which is not ideal but obviously when you get into the woodland uh, that that effect isn't going to be as bad when you get inside the wood it's always going to be more sheltered so it's never going to be quite as bad as outside. Ah, 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 beach. It's one of my, it's one of the things I love about spring woodlands is young beech leaves. They are absolutely stunning and they often have just an incredible, um, incredible vibrant colour to them as well. I can see that colour's really coming out on the camera as well. Um, so that's something I often look at. Again, you just need to have the right light to do it. So what I'm really drawn to with this is not so much the overall scene, although it could work quite well with the bluebells in the right light, providing that mixture of colour. Um, I'm much more interested in just the leaves themselves, so I want to try and concentrate on that. So it's definitely going to be either the 50mm or the 100mm, depending, uh, depending on what kind of effect I want to achieve. I've got three lenses with me, which I almost always take when I'm going for a landscape or a macro type shoot. So I've got this, which is already on the camera at the moment, which is a standard 50 mil lens, uh, Canon 50 mil 1.8. All the lenses I've got are Canon. I've got my Canon uh, 100 mil f2.8 macro lens, which has got the nice, which has got the nice big hood on it. So almost certainly I'll be using that today. I'll certainly try to use it. And then also I've got this one, the third lens, which is the Canon 24mm wide angle lens. Um, again, 2.8. And this is probably, this is actual fact, my least used lens, uh, this really wide angle lens. So I much prefer to use the standard lens. I've just tried that with the 50mm, I've just left the 50mm lens on just to have a look and I actually quite like the composition. Quite surprisingly because I thought it would definitely be an image for the 100mm lens um, but I'm quite liking the effect I'm getting with this. So I'm going to set up on the tripod 
I'm keeping this composition very simple. So I'm using the standard 50mm lens and I'm just trying to basically pick out this area, just isolate this section with the tree and the leaves and just try and concentrate on that and not have too much outside of that. And I've chosen an aperture of around f4. I don't particularly want to get everything in sharp focus. I much prefer the effects where the leaves are sharp and the rest of the background is quite an impression. I'd usually approach this in the same way, in trying to keep the ISO down as low as I can, preferably down to 100, and then use a slow shift speed because I've got a nice sturdy tripod and that way you're going to get much better quality um, but the problem is I've got a bit of a wind that's coming and going so if I do that my shutter speed is just going to be too slow um, so what I'm doing is actually going to ISO 400 and that's allowing me to use a bit of a faster shutter speed and that's hopefully going to stop the little bit of movement that I'm getting from the breeze Now occasionally the wind is actually getting up too much and I don't think it's possible to get a sharp picture. So in that case when the wind's getting up I'm actually using that to try and do a creative shot. So when it gets windier I'm going down back to ISO 100 and I'm allowing the shutter speed just to go really really slow and with that I'm going to get kind of a, a blurring effect with the leaves moving just to get a bit of a more creative slight abstract shot. So I've gone down to ISO 100 but then I've also put the aperture down to f22 so that's letting in less light which means it's forcing the shutter speed to go really really slow to hold the shutter open for longer to get enough light in. So that's giving me a shutter speed of two and a half seconds which is really going to help record that movement. Well, that was fun. Um, my entire vlogging camera just fell on the ground from about four feet and uh, he just wouldn't do anything for about five minutes and in the end I just whacked it back in the opposite direction it fell and it's working again. Often when you're photographing in woodland interiors a polarizing filter can make a real difference because it just helps to bring the colors out, it can boost the contrast a little bit and it reduces glare off surfaces as well so it can reduce the glare from leaf surfaces. Um, so I wasn't too sure if it was going to work this time but it's always good to just try it if you're not too sure. So I've put a polarizing filter on as well and I know in a previous video I did um, I'd done a couple of shots but I hadn't shown the comparison shots on the video so I'm going to do that this time so I'm going to take one shot without the polarizer and then one with the polarizer fully rotated and you can see the difference This kind of overcast light is just absolutely perfect for showing detail and bringing out colour and again the polarising filter can sometimes enhance that. So I've done that as a, as a horizontal, as a landscape format. What I've noticed is we've got the bluebells on the ground underneath so I'm thinking if I do a vertical then I'll um, be able to do a very very similar shot concentrating on the leaves and sort of isolating that section. We'll also be able to get some bluebell colour in the, um, at the bottom of the frame. So I'm going to set up, do a vertical and see how that looks. The light's holding up beautifully, the sun keeps trying to poke out very occasionally but it's not getting very far. Uh, there's enough thick cloud that's just stopping from the sun from coming out and it's just keeping those lighting conditions exactly as I want them. So uh, I don't think I can do much more of that with the 50mm lens. So I'm going to put the 100mm macro on and I'm going to see what I can do with that. been really really frustrating actually I've got the macro lens on so I'm trying to do some sort of semi close-ups of the beech leaves and I'm trying to get smooth backgrounds trying to get the background as clear as possible and not have anything distracting in there but the biggest problem is the wind so the wind just suddenly got up and um, of course once you're getting closer the wind just uh, makes everything worse basically just uh, it exaggerates the movement so been really really struggling and but I've persevered taken quite a few shots there's a couple in there that don't look too bad
So when the wind gets up, I do have a slightly different technique for these kind of shots. What I'd much prefer to do is actually put it on two second timer. You get less vibration that way because you don't have to touch the camera when you're taking the picture. Uh, in this situation, that's just going to be no good because if you use a two second timer whilst it's blowing around, you don't know when the stillest moment is going to be. So what I'll do is switch it back to normal single frame rate. And if it's on the ball head, which it will be for landscape and macro, then I'll just slacken it off enough that I can move it around but it still stays stable. So then what I can do is just slightly move around to recompose if I need to. And, um, and I'll just basically keep adjusting. So I'll just manually focusing, which you always do for these kind of images. I'm just manually focusing, fire, keep adjusting the focus, fire. I found some absolutely fantastic material. I'm gonna to have to rush because my battery's about to die and I haven't got another one for some reason because I'm an idiot. Um, basically these gorgeous, gorgeous buds and I love doing this kind of thing. Um, I think they're sycamore buds and some of them haven't come out but then quite a few have actually started to unfurl the leaves completely. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, as always, if you haven't subscribed, do click on the subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications as well. And uh, hopefully I'll be back here in a few weeks when all the bluebells are out. Should be absolutely awesome. And uh, until then, uh, so until next time, I'll see you somewhere in nature sometime soon.